Hi there, and welcome to FSN Across America. With the NBA playoffs headed toward the conference finals tonight, we begin with basketball. Wilt Chamberlain was larger than life, so it shouldn't come as any surprise he did everything in a big way, especially on March 2nd, 1962, the night he scored 100 points. The game wasn't televised, which only added to its mystique. Gary Pomerantz recently released book, Attempts to Recapture the Moment, and he recently sat down with FSN Pittsburgh's Brent Stover. He was a force unlike any other. He could dominate a game at either end of the floor, but it was on the offensive side that Wilton Norman Chamberlain was feared most. He was in perfect proportion athletically. Seven foot one, 260 pounds. And though he'd been more than impressive in his first two years in the league, becoming the first player in history to win Rookie of the Year award and MVP in the same season, no one was prepared for the night of March 2nd, 1962. This was um, Will Chamberlain's enormous, not only skill, but his will bending a team and an entire sport to his will, and um, it was remarkable. The Big Dipper and his Philadelphia Warriors rolled into the small town of Hershey, Pennsylvania to take on the New York Knicks. It was a meaningless game at the end of the season with very few in attendance. The, the reason the NBA went to outlying areas such as Hershey was to grow new fans. They were trying to, to make this more of a national league. At that time, baseball was king and football was starting to emerge, the NBA wasn't very big at that point. The rebound, Ruckenbill, back to Ruckwick, in the chamber, he made it, he made it, he made it, he made it. a dipper dunk, he made it, the fans are all over the floor. What was big that night was the amount of points Chamberlain scored, 100 to be exact, it was a performance that would forever change the sport, a performance no player before or since has come close to. This game, you know, needs to be re-examined by people. Uh, people need to realize that, um, that this was a remarkable player, that this was the only man who could have scored 100 points. And of course, nowadays, NBA teams don't score 100 points. But he was that dominant. He was that much better than the, than the rest of the players he, who were opposing him. So many people that saw that game are gone, and uh, just, it's rare to find people that, that were there that night. Regretfully, Hershey native and current New York Giants GM Ernie Accorsi was not there. He was in college at Wake Forest and heard the news on the radio. I had ushered in that arena. I had seen every event from the time I was about eight years old. And my first thought was, this is the biggest event in the history of the town, and you missed it. So I don't have a lot of regrets, but you know, usually you, you, these things that you can control. But there's nothing I could have done. I was in school. But uh, I yeah, certainly wish I was there at that and, and saw that. Earl Whitmore was there and remembers the game like it was yesterday. Toward the end of the third period, we were all sort of talking back and forth and uh, wondering how far he would go. And some were saying 80, 85. I said, I believe he might get 90 or 92. And he got to 100, but, uh, but it was sort of touch and go at the end. That night, the Hershey Sports Arena was half empty with only 4,124 fans in attendance. But that number doesn't include the local kids that snuck into the game, one of which was 14-year-old Kerry Ryman. And when Will Chamberlain scored his 100th point, Ryman was the first of several youngsters to rush the court to shake his hand. Then Ryman, on a whim, made off with the basketball. His last points, uh, the ball was in the hand of, of the referee. The referee threw the ball to Will, and, and Will bounced it on the floor. And as he did, I took it. I had no intentions, I never gave it a thought about doing something like that, it just happened. That happening today would be as rare as, well, someone scoring 100 points. You know, you realize the sports is now so removed from us. You know, can you imagine a fan running onto the court to, to shake the great hero's hand? That night and that season in which Wilt averaged 50 points per game, reflected the dawn of a new era. The game would never be the same, and Pomerantz contends that no other individual achievement in sports history can equal the Big Dipper's magical 100-point effort. I mean, it announced loudly that the game had changed in the way it would be played and by the men who would play it. Um, it would be a faster game now, played higher above the rim. I mean, Will took what was a horizontal game and made it vertical. He took it above the rim and made it his. 
And as you just saw, Kerry Ryman took the ball and made it his. What he didn't realize was how significant the ball actually was. So he played with it for years in alleys and on playgrounds. He eventually ended up selling it nearly 40 years later for $67,791.